Uganda is one of the few African countries that has eased restrictions on opiates. When Dr. Henry Dungu began working in the 1990s, the impact of HIV AIDS was at its peak. Back then, there was hardly any pain relief to ease his patient's suffering. I almost felt like I should give up on the medical training because it wasn't making sense, me not being able to treat the people and they go home. When Henry started to prescribe morphine, he was treated with suspicion. Some doctors didn't want me to go to their units because they thought maybe I'm carrying medicine that is not acceptable, which was a bit frustrating. But I'm glad now the situation has changed. People understand the importance of pain control, the role of morphine in control of pain. It gives me much pleasure. While morphine has been available in Uganda since 1993, only doctors could prescribe it. In 2004, the government relaxed the law, giving the same powers to nurses and clinical officers. Good news for Olivia. Today she has visitors. Her home care team is paid for by both the government and international donors. Hi, hi, hi. Six months Hello. ago, they found her bedridden with pain. How's mum? Mum is good. It's good. Since then, they've been giving her morphine. How many times did you change it? This one? Mm. One a Once day. A day. Mm. Mm. In the morning, every day in the yeah. morning. Okay, mm. that's, that's, that's okay. Mm. Yeah. There's no discharge coming out. Mm -mm. That. That's the one who dies for, for this. Okay. Mm. That's fine. That's good. Is there any local pain? There's pain only here. Yeah. Before I got morphine, I was in a very bad way. Before my eye was removed, it was so painful. Mm. But actually, once you spend time without uh, taking it, then the pain begins coming back. So the clock is really very important. And she's got a clock up there. It's time for the team to leave, but they're pleased with her progress, and Olivia is encouraged by their visits. I get a lot out of the visits. I can tell them how I'm feeling. And if my condition has changed since the last visit, they can get me more medication. Coming up in part two, the successful use of strict controls in distributing morphine, and how methadone is helping Sergei and his wife kick the heroin habit. On the outskirts of Kampala, it's pouring with rain. Nelson is preparing a meal for his mother, Olivia. Before her illness, she has cancer, Olivia would have been doing the cooking. But he doesn't mind. Nelson is happy she can eat again, and she's regaining her strength. Since I started using morphine, I can eat, I can sit, I can talk, and I can do a few other things, even though the wound is still big. I can even go in and out of the house. Uganda receives a quota of morphine powder every year, but it's never enough. The true need is always hard to estimate. The morphine is reconstituted at two designated pharmacies and distributed to clinics around the country. Colored dyes are added to denote different strengths. It's all carefully monitored by the International Narcotics Control Board. Every dose must be recorded. The challenge of properly recording how much use is necessary, how much use is uh, carried out, is a very difficult challenge, particularly in poor and developing countries with underdeveloped healthcare systems. Many countries respond to this by not making the medicines available because they know they can't comply with the control regime that comes with that. Uganda has demonstrated it is possible to increase access to morphine while keeping it controlled. Olivia is a good example. 
Morphine can improve the quality of her life. As long as I'm on morphine, I can do some things. She used to sleep at night without sleeping, crying, the, 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 the eyes paining me all the, all the night during the daytime. But now, there's some improvement. However, some fear the use of morphine will lead to abuse and dependency, a fear, say experts, that is unfounded. When you use oral morphine or other opioids for the sole purpose of control of pain, you are not going to get the effect that a drug addict will get. Drug addicts put morphine into the IV or they sniff it and it gives them a high. When you use oral morphine for control of pain, you don't get the high. All you get is pain controlled. And there's evidence to show that pain acts as a physiological antagonist to the addictive effects of opioids. And we've seen many patients who have been on morphine, such as Olivia, when, for example, an infection that was causing a lot of pain has been controlled, the patients will stop taking the morphine. A few weeks after we filmed with Olivia, her condition deteriorated. Unexpectedly, she died. Unknown to her family, her cancer had spread. Her death was not connected to morphine. In fact, her son Simon and the doctor who'd been caring for her say that without pain relief, her final days would have been much worse. Or morphine, I could say, really meant a lot to her. While she was on the treatment, she was really happy. She could move around and talk to the neighbours. She would interact with her family really very well. And also, as we would come to visit her on our routine home visits, she'd really be excited to see us. Um, she actually danced at one time for, for our team when they came here. So it was really something that really touched us. Yeah. It reduced so much pain. It, if it wouldn't, that, that, that medicine called morphine, my mom would have died a lot of months away.